Hi boys and girls, today we are going to review our division rules with one and zero. If you were with me on Friday in our Zoom meeting, you already have these notes filled in. If you were not, then you're going to want to pause the video as we go through it to fill it in as we go. So first of all, when we're looking at division with one, um, today you are gonna do a review glue that is graded on this. So this is a quick review to help you think through it. Let's take a look at dividing by one first. And to do that, we're gonna just quickly fill in our multiplication with one since that's the opposite of division. So six times one is saying I have six in each group and I have one group. That would give me a total of six, of course. And if I had 123 in each group, and I had one group, I would have 123. So our rule is any number times one equals that number. Now division, of course, is the opposite of that. So if we take a look at division, let's think about it as 12 is our total, our dividend, and I'm gonna share it among one person. So I only have one group. I'm gonna take those 12 cookies, divide them among one person. How many cookies will they get? They will get all 12. And remember that division is the opposite of multiplication, so I can check this. I can start with my quotient, 12, multiply it by my divisor, 1, and I should end up with my dividend as my answer of 12. Likewise, if I have 25 cookies and I put them on one plate, how many cookies will be on that plate? All 25 of them. So our rule here is that if you start with a number and you divide it by 1, the answer will be equal to that number, the starting number. Or in other words, if the divisor, the number of groups we're making, remember that's like the knife cutting into our watermelon, if the divisor is 1, then the dividend will be equal to the quotient. They'll be the same number. Here's the three different ways that we said we could write a division problem. And notice how I'm showing you that rule in all three different ways. So here's 12 divided by 1 equals 12, 12 divided by 1 equals 12, and 12 divided by 1 equals 12. Now let's flip that around and think about when how we get 1 as the answer to our division problem. And that happens when the dividend and the divisor are the same number. So think about this problem. If I have 20 cookies to divide among 20 people, how many cookies will each person get? Well, they're each going to end up with 1. Likewise, if I have 14 cookies and I'm sharing them among 14 people, how many groups of 14 can I make? Just one group. So our rule here is any number divided by itself will be equal to 1. Or if the dividend and the divisor are equal to another, the total that I'm starting with and the number of groups I'm making are both the same then the quotient's gonna be one. I'm only gonna be able to make one group. And again, here's our three ways to write a division problem with an example of that. So we have 12 as the dividend divided by a divisor of 12 equals one. And we've written that all three ways. Long division, 12 divided by 12 equals one horizontally, and 12 divided by 12 equals one as a fraction. Next, let's take a look at zero as the dividend. Zero as the dividend, let's first just review it with multiplication. When we do multiplying with zero, what we're saying here is six times zero. It means I have six cookies on each plate, but I have zero plates, I have zero groups. So it doesn't matter how many cookies are on that plate. If I don't have any plates, then I have no cookies, I have zero. 123 times zero is zero. So we know any number times zero equals zero. Um, thinking about that as division then, if I start with zero cookies and I share them among 10 friends, how many cookies will each friend get? They're all not gonna get any because I don't have any to begin with. Or if I have zero cookies, how many groups of 30 can I make? I can make zero groups of 30 because I don't have any cookies. So zero divided by any number equals zero. If I'm starting with zero as my dividend, um, if the dividend is zero, then the quotient will be zero. Um, if I start with nothing and I make groups of nothing, I'm gonna end up with nothing in each group. And again, notice how these are written. Um, this isn't in your notes, but I wanna make sure you notice this because this is on your review glue. So when zero is the dividend, we get the answer of zero as the quotient. When zero is the dividend, we get the answer of zero as the quotient in all three ways that we write it. Now let's take a look at the last situation, which is zero as the divisor. So just remember that we said the dividend is like the whole watermelon, the divisor's the knife that you cut up for the number of groups, and then the quotient is like the individual slices of watermelon that you get. So let's think about zero as the divisor. This is pretty interesting. 24 divided by zero says, if you share 24 cookies with zero friends, how many cookies will each 
friend get? And the answer here is actually an error. So let's think about this. If I start with 24 cookies, can I share them with zero people? Well, no, because I have to share them with at least one person. Maybe it's just myself that I share them with, but I have to share them with at least one person. If I have something, then I can't make zero groups of it because the lowest number of groups I can make is one group. But if I have something, I can't make no groups of it. So the answer is literally an error. If you punch this into a calculator, there's no correct answer, or we say that it is undefined. It's impossible to solve this. Um, another way to think about this is to start with our answer, our quotient, and try to multiply it by zero and see if we could get an answer of 24. Remember how we can work backwards through multiplication. So if we start, what number times zero gives me 24? Well, there isn't any number. That's why there's no answer here. Likewise, if I have 45 divided by zero, if I have 40 cookies, how many groups of zero can I make? Well, I can't make groups of zero. If I have 45, then the smallest number of groups I can make is one, because if I have something, I can only make groups of something. I can't have something and make groups of nothing. So rule number four is it is impossible to divide by zero, or zero cannot be the divisor of a division problem. Um, there's all kinds of jokes on the internet about dividing by zero and the horrible, terrible things that will happen because it's really weird in math to not have a correct answer. But this is the one problem where it is. If zero is the divisor, then there's no correct answer to it. Um, so what happens when you try to divide by zero? There's all kinds of jokes around the internet, but really it just gives you an error on your calculator. Let's take a look at your graded homework or graded classwork assignment that you're going to work on today for me. And again, this is a grade. Um, so there's two sheets of paper stapled together. The second page is where you're going to write out the answer to each problem. And there is a total of six, um, 24 problems altogether. So six are going to go in each column. Um, and for each problem, you're going to first go ahead and write the answer to it. And then you're going to cut it out and glue it. Now, I do you want to point out, when you look at this sort, I've done something to really help you out. So if you're paying attention, first of all, you're allowed to use your notes. But secondly, I've written all three ways that a problem can show up for that particular one. So like these are all three types of problems that you would see that would go under that first column. That's especially important when you get to the zero ones and you're trying to tell whether zero is the dividend or the divisor. Remember, it can't be the divisor. So it can't be the zero, can't be the divisor. And that's the one that doesn't give you an answer or it's just an error. So just doing the first one with you on that, that page, it says write the quotient for each division problem, write error if it can't be solved. So those are the ones where zero is the divisor. And then you cut out and glue each one. So zero divided by one. The trick to know whether or not this is an like an error problem or whether it has an answer is to work backwards. So is there a number I can put here that when I multiply it by one, it would give me zero as the answer? And yes, there is. Zero times one gives me zero. So since there's an answer going this way, that tells me that there is a correct answer. So that means if the dividend is zero, then the quotient will be zero. And it goes under here. You are allowed to use your notes to complete your assignment, but take your time. I will give you a hint. We had three different ways we could write a division problem. So under each one of the columns, there's gonna be two of each type. So in other words, under your first column where the divisor is one, you're gonna have two of the problems where it's a long division, two of the problems where it's written horizontally, and two of the problems where it's written like a fraction that will all go underneath that one. All right, see you tomorrow.